It froze. Why is it why is it freezing? Let me see what's up with this. Okay, so. Yo. Yo, what's good, big homie? What's the word? How are you? I can't complain. Everything is everything. Right, how you doing with this quarantine thing? You 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 respecting it or you out and about? I mean, I, I, you know what I mean, I gotta eat, right? So yeah. I, you know what I mean, I go out, get my food, get my fresh air. I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, that. Yo, before anything, I'm listen, brother. I'm half Puerto Rican. Now, I don't think I'm related to anybody that could dance that salsa like you, bro. What's that about? <laughs> Uh, yo, to be honest with you, that started off as a favor, yo. It's so crazy to start that salsa start off as a favor. But, yo, it's so bugged out because I, you know I mean, growing up, I grew up on a mainly Spanish block. Like, my, it was straight Puerto Ricans on my block. I, I might have been the only black family at the time, you know what I'm saying, growing up. So yeah. I always heard it. And then later on in life, it's funny how it just transitioned and I started dancing salsa off a favor. My mom started doing it first. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And you got bars too. We are gonna talk. About that. Word, appreciate you. That's a fact. So let's get let's get to it, big fella. Let's get to it. Um, let's do it. At what age would would you say you started playing ball? Um, I would say like nine, like nine, ten. I was a late bloomer, bro. Okay. Like I was a late bloomer. Like normally, dudes are starting. Maybe three, four, five years old. I started like nine. Because to be honest with you, I was just a regular kid. Okay. I just like doing regular, you know what I'm saying? I was like having fun and, you know what I'm saying? Doing regular kid shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, you know, my older brother played ball first. Okay. And, you know, watching him play and growing up. And I'm from, you know, we, I'm from New York. So, yes, you know what I mean? Pat Ewan, he right in the backyard and all that. I'm watching him. And I'm like shit. Like that's, I mean, that's I'm I'm watching him and the way he moves and the way he lead his team. He blocking shots. He running the flow. He dunking and all that. Yeah. Like that that that's the best. That, him and my brother was the first two things I was introduced to. Okay, you know what I'm saying while watching this game. Okay, and nine ten years old. How tall are you by that age? I was, I mean I was always a big dude to be honest with you. I was always a big kid. Um, nine ten. Shit, I'm at this point. I'm almost six feet. Got you. So, like, at for for being that tall, that young, how's your how's your coordination? To be honest with you, I oh I was never I was never a clumsy dude or a dude that that trip over his feet and nothing like that. I you know what I mean I you gotta understand like my my family from the West Indies, so I always had that rhythm. I always had that that swagger. That you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It was just, it was just in me. It was just in my blood. You dig what I'm saying? And you know, I, don't get me wrong. Like I had my awkward times or whatever, yeah. but I wasn't. But nonetheless, I still wasn't. Um, I wasn't clumsy. I wasn't. I wasn't like, yo, that doesn't fit on. It was just, you just a big, you just big, big and young. That's it. Got you. So, at what age would you say you started like playing organized? Um, shoot, like nine, ten. That's when I went to uh, Kips Bay and started playing with uh with Artie Green. Okay. You know, what I mean, Artie Green was my first first coach. Um, prior to that, I had played. Yo, it's so funny, right? Um, prior to that, I had played in like these different camps, like you know, when the camps, these different day camps, they they got uh, tournaments and whatnot. Okay. And you know, so during the you know camps, they got different you know leagues and whatnot. So. And um, playing in those leagues, I got, you know, I was introduced to basketball as well. And around that time is when I first met Dre Barrett. Dre Barrett was probably like two or three years older than me. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, at the time, I'm like eight, nine. He's like 12. He's like, you know what I'm saying? He's a few years older than me. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that's when I was introduced to it. And I got, um, I started playing with Artie Green. And then from there, you know what I'm saying? From there, it just snowballed into... You know what culture what what will wind up being my career. You dig yes, me? Yes, sir. Absolutely. How was how how was it getting adjusted to the game? Was it like keeping up with the speed and everything that came with that comes with the game of basketball? Because you know when you when the kids are young, that's 
electricity back and forth fast everybody's running all over the place like how was how was that adjusting for you being so much bigger than everybody and being around the basket right okay so yeah with that to be honest with you it was one of those things to where i mean don't get me wrong the game was a lot different then yep. the game was more it was a lot more slowed down it was going to the post feed the post different things like that so that was the era i came up in it wasn't really run and gun don't get me wrong that existed yep. but it wasn't that that wasn't necessarily the the game plan all the time if you understand yep. what i'm saying absolutely it was, it was also catered to the big. So I grew up in an era where, you know what I mean, it was suitable to go down in the post. It was suitable to have a big man that was, you know what I'm saying, to develop a big man who would later help you, you know what I mean, help you along the way. It was, it was, it was in team's best interest to do so. Absolutely. So how the numbers you putting up at this, at, at, at this point, you got to be, how'd that come to you? Like the scoring aspect of it, you picked it up right away? No, oh. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It was one of those things. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was straight, Drew. I was straight. Grab the rebound, put it back up. Gotcha. Grab the rebound, put it back up. That that was my game for a very long time. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, even when I, you know, later on when I started playing with the Gauchos, it was grab the rebound, put it, put it back up. Grab the rebound, put it back up. And you know, along the way, you you learn how to drop step. You learn how to do different things. Yeah. Um. But that, you know, it slowly began to formulate for me yep. the more I began, the more I began playing. Okay. The more I, you know, continued to play. Okay. So at this age, you're playing Kips Bay and you are you guys traveling around and playing against different neighborhoods, different centers, or is it more like just local play? Honestly, it's more local play. Okay. Um, you know, like if you from, because I'm from Castle Hill, right? So if you're from the Castle Hill Soundview area, yep. More than likely, your first team is going to be that Kips Bay team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you know what I mean? So, at Kips Bay, um, you know, we got the sectionals. We got, you know what I mean? We got different tournaments like that, that you know, in the Bay. Um, you got Citywide. But I, I didn't play Citywide with, uh, with, with Kips Bay. I played with Gauchos. But I was playing in more local stuff with Kips Bay. Got you. Okay. You know? And at, at what at what age do you get to those programs, those the gauchos and 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 the more organized AAU programs? When I started playing with the gauchos, it's crazy because I started playing with the gauchos. Um, my brother took me over there on even I think it was Father's Day, Father's Day of '94. Okay, so it was a year later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A year later, so I, I had to be about 10, something like that. Okay. Um, I went over there and, you know, Russ Smith, the pops, Russ Smith, Russ Smith Sr., yes, that was my that was my coach over there. He was my first coach over there. And we, like, that team he put me on was straight loaded. You know what I'm saying? Marlon Smith, Marvin, Marvin McCullough, Julius Hodge. Like, these guys were on my team off the rip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm getting that experience playing with these with these you know high caliber who with these guys who wind up being high caliber guys. Yes, sir. A, yeah. How's the development process yeah. going for you now that you're playing with much higher levels of competition? I'm sure than with the local everyday kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. My my um the development is still it's still it still need work. You understand? I'm I'm just being honest. Yeah. Um, it still need work, but my confidence is getting there now. There you go. You know what I'm saying? My confidence is it's rising. I'm I'm starting to get a feel for the game now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So my feel for the game, I'm okay. Okay, it's more than just grab. You know, it's it's it's. You know what I'm saying? It's th it's. I'm starting to think the game a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's more like you know. It's more like okay when I catch it in the post. And and that's the thing. I was able to develop that 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 motive because I always playing. Yep. I was always a team player, right? Okay. So if you throw it into me, I want my guys to eat, right? So I'm I am I'm a you know believe it or not, I was more of a point center. Got you. I became a point center. I was that dude. You throw it into the post, they double me. I'm gonna get you an open three. I, I was him. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I was that dude. I flashed to the middle in the press. I'm turning around. I'm passing it. You know what I'm saying? I'm passing the outlet so that guys could score. That was that was me. I was, I was a point center. Okay. And 
apart from <clears throat> apart from what you're doing at the Gauchos, by the time you get around to junior high school, well, how 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 how's the skill set then? Because now you're gonna get into the school setting of playing basketball, which is setting you up. You already know for what's on the back end of that. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. What's the mind state of you now? 12, 13, that junior high school age. Okay, now this is more of a serious thing. I see what I mm -hmm. I can go to these schools if I perfect my craft. Yes, you're right. Um, and that 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 was the that was the mindset. It, um, and if it wasn't my mindset, it was being drilled into me. That was the mindset of the people around me. Because like I told you, I had an older brother, okay. so he was guiding me along the way. And uh, you know, I had different coaches who took you know, my best interests at heart, and they helped me along the way. Oh. So we're speaking junior high, you know, I had a, you know, I went to Sacred Heart, okay. and that's why I first started playing in the fifth grade um, for, for the team at Sacred Heart. Um, it's, it's no longer, it's Sacred Heart in, um, in the Bronx, on so Zarega Ave. Okay. Um, that's why I first started playing uh, school, about school ball yeah. at, in, in the fifth grade. Okay. So fifth grade, the fifth grade is what? Uh, that's like uh, still elementary, but it's like more to a middle school. Yep, yep. Um, so fifth grade, I'm starting to play. And, you know, and I had a coach who, who noticed the potential, right? He saw the touch. He saw everything. He sort of, he saw, because I'm more of a, you know, like me, I'm more of a guy who, who the game, if, if, I, if I get it up here, then we're good. Okay. I'm good, like, because I'm, I'm more of a thinker of the game. I think the game, I'm like, okay, and I try to put things together like a puzzle. Yep. So, and, he, and you know, I had a coach that noticed that, you know, shout out to Coach Hirsch. Um, he noticed that and, you know, but he also saw the touch that I had and he, he wanted to incorporate certain things that I would later on use down the road, like the hook, yep. like the sky hook, the jump hook. He, he like, he hopped on that, yep. like left and right. He's like, yo, you're a big kid. This hook is going to help you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Sure. What was the hardest part for you to pick up on your way to becoming who you became as you're going? The hardest part? Um, to be honest with you, dude, and I don't mean to sound cocky or anything, cocky or arrogant, but nothing was really difficult. It just took... Um, it was just one of those things that once I got a feel for it, I began to, I began to, you know, develop it, you know, in my own capacity, if you understand what I'm saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, and, um, once I, once, uh, if, if I didn't develop it's because I wasn't exposed to it. Got it. Got you. You know, cause I, I pick things up pretty quickly. I'm a, I'm an auditory learner. So if you tell me something. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm also a visual learner. So if you show me something, yeah. I could also pick up on that as well. Got you. So if I didn't develop, or it, it, it's because it wasn't introduced, or it might have been you know introduced to me late, so I didn't get a chance to really to really uh, process it and um, and and put it you know put it put it um, add it to my game. Okay. So your first time playing school ball, where you're playing against these different schools and stuff like that, how'd you do that first year? To be honest with you, I didn't do bad. I um, like I said, I was more of a point center. My like, my coach kept on harping on me to be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. He's like, "Yo, I feel like you're trying to you're trying not to step on toes. I need you to be a lot more aggressive." But my mindset was always, I'm like, "Yo, if I right, cool, my teammates eat, I'm gonna get that thing back." That was always my mentality. Okay, right. If I pass the rock, if I, I mean, if I get others involved, they gonna get it back to me. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep it real. That it, it, it didn't always happen like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was one of those things. Like I, right, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I, but I'm still gonna play though. I'm not gonna. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna harp on. I'm not gonna harp on it. Like I'm. I still want to play. Like let's let's play. Let's win. Because at that, even at a younger age, I still had the mindset to win. Let's win the game. I don't give a damn what we do. Let's just win. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? If I'm gonna be a part of this, we gotta win. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that like yeah. good. Right, go ahead. No, and that, that that was always my mentality. And fortunately I was around people who had that mentality that instilled that in me so that, you know, I could uh you know, I, I could, it, it would later on help me. Got you. Cause like what I've noticed, because I'm 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 much older than you. I'm forty four, right? 
New York is guard heavy always. So it, Absolutely. it's tough. You got to be a certain type of big to actually be able to stay in a whole game mentally. You understand? Right. Because you're rebounding, right. you're blocking shots, you're running the floor, and maybe out of five, you might get a touch. Right. And that's just what it is. You know what I mean? So right. it's like no, you, ain't lying. you guys got to work harder away from the, the game so that when you get in the game, you can demand the ball because it's always guard heavy. You know what I mean? In the era you came up, guard heavy. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely, always, always see that but like good bigs always incorporate a way to. It's like undeniable. You gotta give them the rock. You understand what I'm saying? Because everybody's right. team has two, three, four guards and and two, three dudes on the bench that'll start on other teams. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep. So you get through the fifth grade and. You're playing. I'm sure your confidence is growing as 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 you're developing. So, what Absolutely. what are these summers like for you when you go back to the AAU scene, like 12, 13, getting into that junior high school atmosphere? 12, 13. I'm still playing with these guys at this point. Uh, Jules, I think Jules is playing with. Um, he's no longer playing with the Gauchos, but he's playing. You know, he's playing with like Riverside and all that. And um, you know, I'm playing with. Like I said, Marvin McCullough, uh, Marlon Smith. I'm playing with those guys. Um, you know, a few other guys that you might know. But, um, you know, my confidence level is is, is pretty solid. I'm, it's improving. It's improving year after year. Um, you know, we go into different tournaments. We go into Rhode Island. We go into, I'm starting to travel now at 12, 13 years old. And really getting that, that experience of getting out of New York City. So I was exposed to that real early, yes. basketball wise. You, you understand what I'm saying? I was exposed to that early. Absolutely. Just going out, going out and competing, competing against some of the you know best guys that was my age. Yeah, exactly. And and how how were you finding the competition once you got out of New York? Out of New York, especially when my confidence, like you understand, know twelve, thirteen, I wasn't dunking yet, but I was damn close, right? <laughs> so. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is a cakewalk because we blow, like, we blowing dudes out by 30, 40. Like, it's not even, it's not even a, you know what I mean? It's not even a contest. Like, we haven't closed game, but our close games is with, is in the city. Yeah. Our close games against the Riversides and the Abyssinians and the, you know what I'm saying? Our close games is against them. Yeah. Outside, we went in chip after chip after chip. Okay. You feel yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. And at this point, are are well like what are you thinking about like as far as okay you're in the middle of your junior playing junior high school basketball you're developing your confidence is up you're traveling you're doing well in the city out of the city so your confidence for 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 that time has to be at a high that maybe you didn't even see yourself reaching with all the success you're getting so young what are the high school lists like for you was it rice from the jump I'm, I'm, you want me to keep a buck, keep it a buck? It was, I mean, you know, I guess subconsciously it was okay. because, um, you know, when I was, uh, I first got my first, uh, visual of rice play when I was nine years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And my, and that's my brother, my older brother, he was in high school. He went to Bronx science and Bronx science played rice in a Christmas tournament in, in the Gaucho's gym. Yeah. And I remember going to the game and sitting front row, and the head coach of my brother seems like, "Yo, watch out for Felipe! Watch out for Felipe!" I'm like, who? "Like, I'm like, I'm looking around like, yo, who the hell is Felipe?" Yeah. I seen this dude number thirteen cross one dude. You know what I mean, at the top of the key, come down and bang that joint down right, right down the middle. I'm like, "Oh, oh, that's Felipe!" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh shit!" Okay, now, all right, I'm like, "Okay, that, that okay, that, this rice team is all right, yo." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yep, yep. they press and they get up, getting up and down. So fast forward, right? I go to um, you got like I told you, I'm from Castle Hill. Yes, you know what I mean? So I go to um the St. Ray's camp. St. Ray's got a camp that they held that they hold for the junior high, uh, junior high school guys, right? I go to their camp and you know what I'm saying? They already got D. Miller. They already got Char I think Charlton Clark was already um, graduating or, 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 or and Eddie Har not Eddie Harris, Eric Harris. Pardon okay. me. 
Eric Harris was um with they were the counselors and whatnot. So I'm going there as me, Jules, um, Devon folks, a couple other people over there, yeah. right? And I wind and I wind up doing my thing. I wind up doing my thing at the camp. And, you know, no shade to, you know, Gary D or nothing like that, but it was more um I guess he was in a situation to where he's like, Okay, you're at my camp. I mean, I mean, it's your trip. Like, what you want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't, yo, we want you. It was more like, yo, you came to my camp. What's up? Like, you know what I'm saying? But Mo, on the other hand, Mo was like, yo, who is this kid? I need him. I want him right now. Got it. You understand what I'm saying? And that that, that energy is a different energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go where I want it. You understand what I'm saying? He's like, yo, who is this kid? He's a big kid. I like your man. I like his game. He got potential. Let me get him. I want him now. <laughs> you feel yes, me? Sir. Yes, sir. And that, and and that's what it was. So I like shoot. I like yo shoot. You want me? I'm 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 there. And that's you 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 realized that when you were still in junior high school or eighth grade, right before going to high school. Um, Mo, Mo's pursued me for a while. Mo's pursued me since I was like in sixth grade. Got you. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was a, it was a, you know what I mean? It was, for, it was a longevity yeah. thing with him. Like he, in sixth grade, he was on it. Like he saw me playing a tournament or whatever. Yeah. And he kept on asking my coaches like, yo, who is this kid? I need this kid, yo. Let me get him. Got you. And that, that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. So going into Rice now. Mm -hmm. what's that thought process like for you going into that situation? You're going into an elite school, legends after legend after legend. You from Castle Hill, so the Kenny Sats and, you know, the Dre's and the, all the all of Bronx kids that came out of Rice, the history. Now you're going there. What's that mindset for you? I'm going to keep it a buck. I had no idea what to expect. I'm not, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I, I had no idea. This is when I got to Rice is when, where I was exposed to, I was, I was how to be a, how to number one, how to be a pro, but how to win, how to, how to be a winner. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I was first exposed to, like how to be a winner. Look, we do things a certain way. All that kitty shit you was doing. All that, all that immaturity, we not doing that here. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And on top of that, I learned, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, at Rice, you just got to wait your turn. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm a, like, I'm a freshman. I get there. Like, and I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm going to keep it a buck. And like you, you just said it, great program. They didn't really need me like that. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't need me. Like, they had their own legacy. They could have did without this 7-3 seven, three, seven, three dude, right? But they was like, yo, we want you. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's do it. Okay. So, you know, I'm playing behind, you know, the Andre Sweets. I'm playing behind Kyle Cuff. Like, like these dudes are seniors. Like, oh, I, I got to wait my turn. Right away. Yeah, yeah. I, I was on varsity straight straight off the rip. Okay. Yeah, I was on, I was on varsity straight off the rip. I didn't play. Um, I didn't play that much, but I was on varsity straight off the rip. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, when you got there, they were still stacked. What? Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had we had like I said, Andre Sweet, Andre Barrett, we had um um Kyle Cuff, we had Jay Wingate at this time. Jay Wingate is on um he got moved up um from the year before. Kiki got moved up from the year before, so shoot. Like you know what I'm saying? Like these all these dudes is in front of me, so I'm like, yeah, man, I just gotta wait my time. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean, and that, and that's what it was. And but along the way, they helped me. They they definitely helped me. I remember one time we was practicing. I fought them, and Kyle Cuff was like, "Yo, if you want, if you trying to get any playing time, bro, you got to learn how to run that floor." And I was like, "What the hell? Like, what you mean by that? Like, what the hell is run the floor? Like, I'm you gotta understand, I'm young. Yeah. I'm 13, 14 years old, so I don't know none of this terminology. You. He talking about yeah. run the floor. What the hell that mean? Like, like run the floor? Like what the fuck? What the fuck you mean run the floor? He's like, yo, you gotta run the run the floor. And I, I mean, I used to watch him and how he did it. Like, if you watch Kyle, Kyle ran the floor like a gazelle. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, absolutely. He ran the floor like a gazelle, and that's one of the things that I picked up okay. from him. So how long did it take for you to get in the rotation at Rice? Um, it took me to the, literally the end of the season, right? Um Literally the end of the season. Pardon the noise. My fault. Um, 
Well, it took it took me the end of the season, right? Um, we played All Hollows at All Hollows, and they, they had uh, I think Randy Williams was on that team. Charles Henson before he transferred to St. Rays was on that team. Um, they had a couple. Do- no, was Charles Henson on? No, Char- I think Charles Henson was already at St. Rays, but they had a couple cats on that um, All Hollows team. Okay. And I played. Uh, I played. I, I, it was garbage time, but I scored 14 points in 14 minutes. But it was it was garbage time. But still, yeah, yeah. It, as a freshman on rice, I'm like, shit. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't give a damn. I scored 14 points in 14 minutes. I'll take it. Absolutely. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. So now going into your summer, it got to be a totally different mindset. You're dealing with Mo Hicks for a whole year already. So I'm sure that did a lot for you mentally and physically as a ball player. How big are you? Absolutely. I'm 7'2". Okay, already as a freshman. Yeah, I'm off the rip. I was, I, was, I, I, I was 7 feet in 8th grade. Okay, got you. 7 one, seven two in 8th grade. I was 7 one, seven two in 8th grade. Yeah, okay, got you. So now, you still in the AAU circuit? Yes. And you're playing with Gaucho still? I'm playing with Gauchos, and I'm also playing with the with the Ravens. <laughs> Funny enough. <laughs> Oddly enough, huh? Oddly enough, I'm playing with the Ravens, yo. But, yo, look, look, look. To my defense, yo, I'm, I only did it because Dre did it. And I don't mean that, you know what I mean? I don't mean to, I don't mean to snitch, but, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, Dre played with the Ravens. I'm playing with the Ravens, too. <laughs> got you, got you, got you, got you. How's that going for you Word. now? What type of ball player are you now at this point? Great question. Um, at this point, at this point, I was it because, like, remember I told you, I was only I was only rebound and put back, exactly. right? Yes, now, at this point, I'm thinking the game. I'm like, okay, well, I need to back, screen the back of the, you know what I mean, screen the back of the zone, you know what I mean, and then dive down a post, be big on the block. I need to drop step, hook here. I need to, you know what I mean, turn around, spin. I need a counter. I'm doing I'm doing mic hand drills and all that. Like I'm doing all these things to get myself better. Yeah. I'm developing the left hand. My left hand is getting crazy. You feel what I'm saying? I'm hooking with both the right and left hand. I'm catching it up and under. I'm doing all. The, I'm doing all these things. I'm starting to develop. I'm feeling myself. I'm getting hyped. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing now on the AAU circuit. I'm gonna keep the butt. I wasn't. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really do well on the AAU circuit. I was more. I was more. If you put me around pros and you put me in a system, yep. I'm a flourish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you like, yeah, man, if, you, if it was just random play, I didn't do as well. Okay. I didn't, I, I, I wasn't as consistent. I'm, I'm just keeping it a buck. Okay, got you. Nah, I appreciate that. So you come back for your sophomore year, varsity. Dre's gone, right? Dre was a senior when you were a freshman? Yeah, Dre gone, Sweet gone, uh, Cuff is gone. All them, dude, all them seniors is gone. We just lost in the, yeah, man, freshman year, we lost in the city championship against St. Ray's, against P. Mully and all them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now it's sophomore year. Now the summer, the summer going into my sophomore year, yes, um, the summer going into my sophomore year, Mo pulled me to he like he had me all summer. Okay. He took me to my, Roberto Clemente's um this this the Roberto Clemente joint right there in Harlem. Yes, and we we was in that pool every day in the pool. We was running up and down, defensive slides. High knees, everything, everything. We was doing everything. He's like, "Yo, this is going to help you." Boom, boom, boom. And I, you know, what I man. And we talk about running the floor, right? That following year, I ran the floor like it, like it was nothing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Going into my sophomore year, I'm like, "Yo," and like now, now at this point, I, I'm, I'm not in the water no more. I'm just on the court. I'm, I'm getting up and down. You ask me about the tempo, I'm getting up and down. Okay. I'm getting up, up, up and down. This, it's nothing to me right at this point. Okay. So. You know what I mean? You 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 you're developing. You know what you're capable of. Are you getting the ball? Are they are they playing are they playing to your strengths at this point at Rice? Yes. Yes. Um but my sophomore year was um it wasn't the best year. <laughs> it wasn't the best year I had at Rice, right? It was one of our worst one of the worst records I, I, I had at Rice. My, probably, no, not one of the worst. The worst record I had at Rice. We finished the season 15 and 11. Now, we started off well. Like, we started off going, uh, you know what I'm saying, playing against Kennedy the first game of, first game of the season. I had 19 and 13 on, um, on, on, on them. You know what I mean? And the season's going okay, but we didn't have that senior leadership, though. Got you. 
You feel me? Yes, we didn't have that senior leadership, unfortunately. You know what I mean? We're playing against Oak Hill, mm -hmm. and they had a crew. Drew, they came, yo, Drew, they came into the gym. Yo, they they came and looking like the monsters, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was, you know, it's not very, it's not a lot of times in my career to where I see a team was just flat out better than yep. us. But Drew, they was, I ain't gonna lie, they was better than us. Yo, I'm not, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Got you. How did you perform against that type of competition at this point? How are you playing? I play. I play. I play well, but I mean, points wise, I didn't. You know, I mean, I, I didn't have that many points. But if you watched the game and you saw my productivity on the floor, yeah. like that's more more than anything else. That's what I did. I did the intangibles. I did the things that you don't see on paper. See, that's you my thing with y'all, right? The bigs in New York that play with elite guards don't get the credit for not putting up the numbers that the elite guards do, but they don't get the credit for the things that they do that change right. the whole game. You understand what right. I'm saying? Especially a kid like you. Whether you're getting 30 points or 5 points, you're 7 feet tall, brother. Like, you're changing right. the game. You know what I mean? And I just feel that that's not appreciated in New York. Everybody respects yeah, numbers. nah. You know, it's the it's the numbers thing. You feel me? That's all they concern with is the numbers. They want to see, oh nah, oh you ain't put up thirty. Oh nah, you had a horrible game. You just have four points. Oh nah. I, I mean, that's that's always been the New York culture, that's, though. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, that's a fact. That's a fact. You in the same class as Jay, Kiki, and them, or you a year younger? I was a year younger. Okay, so their senior year was your junior year. Correct. I was at that game at Fordham when you just went bonkers. Oh, yeah. I guess all, all hollows. Yeah. That was your retribution. You know what I mean? Like, that was your get back that year. You know what I mean? Drew, you, you telling me, Drew? Yo, Drew, they kicked the ass the year before. My sophomore year, yeah. they kicked the ass. Like, yo, they, they kicked the ass so bad. It, you know, it got to the point that where after they beat us, yeah. Like, I, you know, we wouldn't even want to come out the locker room. They kicked our ass so bad. Like, they was beating us on the average of, like, 20, 25 points every game they played us. You see, and your man J5 said that as long as he was in Rice, he never lost to Ohalos. Right. And Bob, Bob, Bob said what you just said. No, and it's true. Yeah. It's true. They kicked our ass. Yo, that junior year, you gotta, but but you gotta understand that junior year was special because because of what happened that led that led up to it. You feel what I'm saying? Because we, I mean, like my that going into my junior year, especially for me, Mo Mo messed around and he he threw me in the Nike All American camp. Okay, right. I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm I'm playing against the nation's best. I'm playing against Amari Sadamai. I'm playing against Sean Williams. I'm playing against all the uh, Chris Paul. All these elite elite dudes. They they in that camp. Okay. You feel me? And that that's what helped me with my development. Then I came back off that, and they, I mean, he was like, you know what? I'm going to throw you in Dykeman, and we're going to play 17 under, and we're going to play unlimited. I remember that year. Yes, sir. You feel yes, me? Sir. Absolutely. Word. So that got a, that that that's got you to where you where you needed to be. So when y'all took when y'all went into Fordham and y'all playing for this championship, I asked all of you guys mm -hmm. the same question, but everybody's feelings are gonna be different. What was that feeling like for you, knowing what was at stake, and you're there? You know what's so crazy about that. I mean, I, I don't know how the rest of the guys felt, but I, I, I entered that game with a very calm mindset. I was like, I feel like, you know, like, you know, when you ready, yep. I knew I was ready. Like, I knew we were ready. I, I had no worries. You got to understand, I get a little butterflies yeah. before every game. You know what I'm saying? I get nervous as shit sometimes before a game, then I, I shake it off. But once that ball go, you know what I mean, once the jump ball go out, I shake it off. But you know what I mean? I had none of that. I was very calm and I was like, yo, we got this, yo. You feel me? And that that was my mindset going in, going into it. But you gotta understand, like, like I said, from the sophomore year, like this is this is all. I'm like, yo, we playing against all hollows. This is all from that sophomore year, Drew. <laughs> like I said, they kicked our ass. Like they really kicked our ass. Like they kicked our ass, right? Yeah. So then, like before the before the chip, right? 
they was like, you know what? We're not going to play it on hollows. This is one of the games during the regular season. They, we're not going to play it on hollows, you know what I'm saying, for our home game. We're going to go to Gauchos. You going, what? You going to play in Gauchos for one of your home games? That's how y'all feeling? Cool. Take this 18 zip to start off the game. We ain't we, we ain't playing with you. What the fuck wrong with you? You all playing? You all come to our crib and claim that as your as y'all's? Yeah, yeah. And then you know what I mean? how that be our away game? You bugging out. Take this 18 zip clip and you know what I mean walk away with this L. Okay. Whole lot. Okay. You know what I mean? So that like that was our mindset. Like so, we already had a grudge. Y'all got kicked ass the year before. Yep. Y'all tried to take our home crib away from us. Oh no, we about to demolish y'all in this in, the, in this uh in the shitty championship game. It's quiet for y'all. It's over. Was that your best game in high school? No, it was one of them. I it was one of them. Um, it was definitely one. It was one to remember because <laughs> I missed a Did shot. I was twelve, miss- twelve from the field. God, fam. Right. No, you know, but the, the crazy thing is what a lot of people don't remember. During the regular season, I was averaging maybe anywhere between 11 and 13 a game. Okay. And then I, I ramped it up in the playoffs to where I was averaging 24. You understand what I'm saying? So that first round, like, you know what I'm saying? In the, you know what I mean? Because the way it used to go, it used to go um, Bronx, Manhattan, and then the playoffs. Okay. Right? Yep. So a Bronx Manhattan, and you had the first round, you had the second round. Wait, you had the first round, you had the semis, you had the city chip, and then you go upstate. Okay. Right? So we had the – no, matter of fact, it was the Archdiocese, Bronx Manhattan, and then the playoffs, right? Okay. So Bronx Manhattan, we, we, I mean, we win the Archdiocese, we win the Bronx Manhattan. First round, we play against CK. I had 30. I had 30 on CK. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My career, that was my career high at that point. Okay. Um, second round we played Severian, Chris Taff and them. Yep. I had seventeen. I had seven. I had, I had a double double, seventeen and some change. Kiki went off that game. He had like thirty. Oh. He was wilding. <laughs> you know, Kiki was wilding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, after we beat, after we beat Severian, we went on to the uh, to the city championship. Okay. What was your best game in high school? Pat you and you bugging Pat you and I done had thirty on you too. My fault. Go ahead. My, my fault, Drew. What was your best game in high school? Um, one of the best games is the, is the city chip. Uh, my best game, I don't know. You got to pick any 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 during my senior year, Drew. And it seemed like every other game I had 30, 35, 38, 33. Your your senior year, you was putting up some numbers. Yeah, I, I I was wigging my my jeep my senior year because, you know you know what it was I'm a senior like I I, I didn't sat behind I didn't sat behind seniors and I thought that this was I mean, at this point it's my turn, sure. you know what I mean and that that's all it was. Um, love is love, Pat. You already know that. You know how far me and you go back, bro. You already know. Um, but. Yeah, my senior, I, I just thought it was my turn. But I, don't get me wrong, I still had the assistance of Arturo Dubois. You know, you remember Arturo, hey, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, party Artie, That's my. That's my brother, yo. Yeah. I had the assistance. I had his assistance, and he he was the one. You talk about development. He was the one that helped me get used to that physical play. He was a dog, man. And I, I you know, like I really had to get mentally ready to play against this dude in practice every day. Gotcha. And I'm like, damn, I gotta play against this dude again. <laughs> Like I, I, you know, there was time like you know, you know um, in Kings of Comedy when he's like, "Yo, I, I'd rather go to hell." Like I'm, <laughs> I damn, like I gotta play against this dude again. <laughs> Word, like it, I was on that type of time, like yo, damn. But you know what? It helped me though. It, it definitely helped me, it, especially in my development. Got you. What was the recruiting process like for you? It was, um, to be honest with you, I put myself in a position. To where I I I um I could just I could just close my eyes and put my put my finger on an envelope and that's where I was going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was at that point. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm and this I'm humbly speaking. I'm just being honest. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And and this is what a lot of people don't know. My senior year, we go to Houston. 
and uh, we play in Houston, and that's like, like the nation's best tournament. Everybody's in there, NBA scouts, college scouts, everything, right? Okay. So I have a great tournament. I have a great tournament out there. And Mo pulls me, he pulls me into his room, he goes, yo, bro, I know you want to go to college. I, I, I know. Yeah. But if you go to college, this is your situation. I have this NBA team right now that wants to draft you right now. And I'm like, as tempting as it is, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm now I'm good. Cause at the time I'm gonna keep it real with you, Drew, I wasn't ready. And I knew that, I knew that off rip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was killing, I was killing the high school scene, but I, I didn't, it was a lot more things, there was a lot more components that went into it that I didn't have as yet. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it was one of those things. And, and you know, I don't, I don't regret it, but he's like, yo, you go to the league, right? And he's like, yo, you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm good. And you, yo, what you also got to understand, Drew, is this is 03. Yes, sir. Right? The Lakers just came off a three-peat. The Spurs just won. The Spurs won at 03. Yeah. The following year, Kevin Garnett is the MVP of the league. I'm like, yo, all these dudes is in their prom, Drew. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go and take my ass to college. I, I'm, I'm good on that for right now. <laughs> I hear that. I'm, word. I'm, I'm, yo, like I said, I kept it a buck with myself. I'm like, yo, I, I'm, I'm going to take my ass to college. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're and we going to handle it like that. And plus, on top of that, you got to understand, like, my parents from the West Indies and all that, you're not going to get your education. Shit up, and that shit just wasn't going to fly. I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm home for Caribbean mama, boy. <laughs> Thank you, and you know, and when I tell people that they're like, "Yo, Gary, you bugger," but you see, you get it though. You get it. That's a. If I would have told my mom's that, my, you know, she'd look at me like, "What? <laughs> take, you don't take your, if you don't take your silly ass to college, man, you don't stop playing." What was that lit like? You know what, I mean? like? what was that process for you to 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 wind up choosing Kentucky? Okay, so growing up, I always had that bucket of schools. Temple, Duke, North Carolina, and Kentucky. Okay. Temple, John Cheney was there, and he was a big coach. So I was like, yo, if I go there, you know what I mean? And they play primetime, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That that was primetime. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I always heard of the 6 a.m. practices, but I'm like, yo, I'm not a stranger to hard work, so that's not going to be a problem. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Duke, it was, yeah, man, Duke is Duke. Yep. You feel yep. me? Um... Duke is Duke, so yeah, I mean, there was no, there was no explanation. Okay. North Carolina, the same thing with North Carolina. Mike went there, yeah, you know I mean, Joe Forte, all these other dudes, all these other elite dudes went to North Carolina. It's like shit. And then there was Kentucky. Now Kentucky, uh, uh, Kentucky had the winning tradition, yeah. all-time winning this basketball program and and um, Division One college basketball history. That's a, you know, if that's not on your list, especially if you're able to go there, yeah. you know what I mean? It's a fact. Fuck it. Yeah, so and the crazy thing is the way it got the way I got their attention is I called them. Wow. <laughs> I called them. I was like, yo, you know what I mean? Cause I, I originally called to speak to Tubby Smith. But he wasn't, you know what I mean? He wasn't there. So they was like, yo, we'll put you on with Coach Hanson. I was like, yo, coach, Shigaria Lane, da da da. I'm interested, I'm interested in coming to the school. He's like, all right, big fella, da, da. and he did his research and he, he began to pursue me from there. And what 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 um grade were you in? That was your senior year? I was going into my senior year. It is before you put up all them numbers your senior year to back why you wanted to go to Kent, Kentucky. Now you, that, yeah, prove it. Like I want to go to your school and watch what I'm about to do. <laughs> watch what I'm about to do. I just did it, and I just did it. How'd y'all do your senior you year at Rice? What's that? How'd y'all do your senior year at Rice? Um, we lost. We lost in the first round to Malloy to Marlon Smith and them. Um, but I mean, we finished the season like eighteen to eight. We started it. We started the. Um, we started. Uh, we started to. We started the season. We came in top five, maybe top two. Okay. I remember we played the uh, same tournament in Houston. When we came back, we was number two in the nation, and then we came back and lost to Chris Taft and Severian. You know, my junior senior year, two years in a row. Every time we came back from uh, from Houston, we lost to Severian that following that following game. Mm. Got it. So how long did it take you before you committed? 
Um, you know, funny story. I originally committed to Rutgers University. Yeah. I originally committed to Rutgers yeah. and and Coach Waters, shout out to Coach Waters, he was on me. He wanted me, he wanted me heavily, like heavily. Okay. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, da da da, we're setting this up for you to do this, do this, do this. But the thing is, Drew, but like I told you, when I was exposed to traveling early yeah. and I'm staying, you know what I'm saying? I'm going out, I'm like, yo, this is what this is what I could possibly, you know what I mean, experience. I like, yo, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not staying in the tri-state area. I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't see this already. This is cool. But I'm out. Like I want to go to school out of state. Yeah, good for you. And that was my mentality. I don't want to stay in the tri-state area. And I felt that. You know what I mean, uh, um, ultimately, I felt that 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 Rutgers was was a little too close. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was just a little too close to home. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when did you when did you do when did you decide it was Kentucky? Okay, so I read. Um, I I verbally committed to Rutgers. Yep. And then um, I saw Kentucky. So, like, you got to understand, they came to my crib and all that. Tubby Swift came to Castle Hill. You all up in my crib. Him and Coach Hanson, yeah. they all up in my crib. Like, yo, we want you. I turn them down, <laughs> right? So, um, they play. I, at this point, I was already committed, and they played Utah. This is the year they went to the Elite Eight, right? And they lost to, um, they lost to D. Wade in them. Yep. But um, they played Utah the, the round before. Um, and I'm watching them play, and I'm like, yo, damn, yo, I just, the whole time, the reason why I wanted to go to college is because I wanted a chip. You know what I mean? I wanted to get a chip because I, I felt that a chip was going to help you with, you know what I mean? It was going to help you with draft stock and all that, like, you know what I'm saying? If you want a chip, it was just going to bring more attention to the school and all that. That was my rationale going in. So I like, and I'm watching them play, and I'm like, yo, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. So maybe a, a couple of days after, I call Coach Hanson and I'm like, "Yo, you know what? I want to come to Kentucky." He said, "Big fella, you sure? You sure? Because you, you, you know what I mean, we came to your crib before and you rejected us last time. You sure you want to come?" I said, "Coach, I want to come to come to Kentucky." You know what I'm saying? And now and, and pretty much and they, yo, they did something that was unheard of. They came to my crib again. <laughs> They pulled up to my crib again, Drew, to Castle Hill. Yeah. They in the hood. Wow. They in the hood, Drew. Yeah. But they was scared as shit, yeah. though. <laughs> I didn't find out this till later, but they, yo, they, they was nervous as hell, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they, they came. They came back, though. You know what I mean? So when you get out there, your first day, uh, you went for a visit? Yes, I took um, I took a few visits, but I did. To answer your question, yes, Kentucky was definitely one of my visits. And how was that experience? To getting seeing the campus, the gym, the facilities, everything at at that level, because that's high D one, man. Like that's that's top of the top right there. Right, you, it don't get no higher than that. I got there, and you know, I got there during midnight um midnight madness. Ooh. I came down from midnight madness, and 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 seeing all the support and you know what I mean the, the way they that the fans is behind their players and you gotta understand there's no pro teams in Kentucky so they treat in UK yes. like like they the Knicks or the, they they the Lakers the or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. you feel what I'm yeah. saying like we the Lakers like you know what I'm saying we got Louisville and Louisville's cool no disrespect to Louisville but you you just ain't UK you know what I mean <laughs> I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm just keeping it a buck, yeah. and that's what I mean. I wanted to be a part of that because you gotta understand, coming from Rice, like I told you before, I learned, I learned how to be a winner. Yeah. So I, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna, you know what I mean, relinquish that. I didn't wanna relinquish that mindset. I wanted to be a winner on the next level too. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And that was just my mentality. I want to win. I don't care. Like that was always my. I just want to win. Yeah. I don't care how we get it done. I just want to win, bro. That's it. Sure. No, that's that's you know the I mean? mindset you need to. Have. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's a fact. So getting to Kentucky, getting to the practices, seeing what the what the competition is like, because now you got to step it up yet another notch. Now you got to get your grown man on. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. TV, SEC, big schools. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's a lot of pressure for a young kid to be experiencing. How did you deal with it? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, uh, you know, 
I, I think I handled it the best that I could. There's, I mean, there's nothing that can really prepare you for that. Except going through You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Except going through it, right? And there's nothing that can really... But I knew I knew going in that this is what I wanted, and I knew... i like, okay, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? This is, I'm not a stranger to hard work. That, you know, I mean, I go in and do this, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out the rest yeah, later. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from New York. Like, I, I, I done been through worse. Like, this ain't... The same, the same, the same, you know what I mean? If, if it ain't death, you know what I'm saying? Or nothing like that, I, I, I'll be all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it ain't going to kill me, I'll be all right. And what are your expectations of yourself going into your freshman year? Um, I just wanted to play, you know what I mean? I wanted to play. Like, that, that was it. I just wanted to play, like, you know what I mean? And, and I went in. I went in with the stuff I already knew. Yep. And like I told you, I was a cere cerebral player. And that, that's why I just went in. I'm asking questions. I'm doing th different things because I, you know, I want the best. I want the. Um, I'm trying to find, figure out the best way to get on that floor. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So that, that's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just sponging everything up. I'm just being a sponge at this point. I'm being a sponge. And you know, they, they, they told me, they told me what they, they what their role that they wanted for me was. And you know, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted for myself. But I was like, you know what? If we gonna, I mean, if we gonna win, let's get it done. I really don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I don't score a bucket, I'm fine. Let's just win. You know what I mean? That's what they told me. They're like, yo, look, we just need you to block shots and, and, and rebound and set screens. Cool, no doubt. If we win, I'll be all right. You know what I mean? That's a lot, though. For a kid that is coming from a program that's winning, coming off of a 30 clip every other game in high school, your confidence mm -hmm. is up. But what a lot of kids don't realize is that you the man in your school, you might be the man in your city. But when you go to the right. schools, everybody on that team was the man in their school, was the man in their city. So exactly from you having such a big role at Rice to having more of a role player's role, it can take its toll on the kid. You gotta be a different yeah. type, you gotta be a different type of athlete to say. This is what they need of me. This is what I'm going to give them and wear it. Right. And, and the fact that you did it shows how unselfish you are. You know what I mean? I respect that because it's not everybody that can deal with that. That happens to a lot of these kids. And the first thing they think is if I transfer, I'm going to go somewhere. They're going to give me the green light. I'm going to be the man. And, and, and it's, that's, that's, that's not the case. So right, that's right. coming into that role and you accepting it, how did the year go for you? Um, I mean, it started off well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it started off well. Like, I, you know, I was in, it was in talks that I was going to, I was going to start as a freshman and everything. Like, it just started off, <laughs> started off well. And then, you know, as the year went around, it just, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't wind up personally, it didn't wind up as good as I, you know, as I anticipated or as I necessarily wanted it to be. But we, you know, we still, you know, we still winning though. The team, you know, we're, we're, you know, at one point we was number one in the country. Um, we finished the season um, with the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. And so, like, like I said, we're winning. So I'm like, all right, you know what I mean? I got three more years. I'll be all right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's just fuck it. Let's let's get to it. Like, let's 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 see what we can do. What was that team like your freshman year at Kentucky? We were solid, man. We had, um, you know, Chuck Hayes. We had Kalen Azabuki. We had um, Gerald Fitch, Eric, Eric Daniels. We had those guys. We had a solid team. Okay. You know, I mean, we had a pretty solid team. You know, we have we had solid guys, and um, you know, we wound up losing in the second round to UAB. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, yeah. and I felt we could have went a little bit further than that, but you know, it, it it is what it is. Your first ever experience in the NCAA tournament. What was that like for a kid? Because you're still a kid at this point. You know what I mean? What was that like? The, the, something you've seen on TV a million times, you're there now. And the target is on your back. You know what I mean? Right. Walking into that whole experience, what was that like for you as a kid? Um, I, was, I, I took more of a, an observer role. Okay. I took more of an observer role because I didn't know what, like I said, I didn't know what to expect. I'm, I'm taking, I'm learning things on the fly as they go. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, this is what media did. You know what I'm saying? They ask you questions. Like, it's more of a, like in the league. Like, so about this matchup, what do you think about that? Da, 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 da? And they, 
You know what I'm saying? Yep. You got press conference interviews. You got, you know what I'm saying? You flying, you flying on a Tuesday to go play in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole, the whole process of the tournament is crazy. You know what I'm saying? We're moving like a, we're, we're actually moving like a pro team at this point. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, you know, observe this capacity because I'm trying to soak all this up and try to figure out number one, how to handle it. And number two, where, where I, I fit in everything. Yes, sir. That's what's up. So you're coming out of your freshman year. How are you feeling? What 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 what's going through your mind? Like how are you feeling about your first year of college in the books with this new this new role that they got you playing as a ball player? Coming in, I um I knew like I said, I'm not a stranger to Harvard, so I'm I'm coming in um it's my sophomore year. And I'm looking at the, the possibilities, you know, I mean, of, of what we can do. We at this point we had four All Americans or three All Americans come in, and one and Ron Mel Bradley. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So we had Joe Crawford, we had Randolph Morris, we had Rajon Rondo, we had um, and we had uh, Ron Mel Bradley. Those were the four guys. And with the with the guys we had at our, at our nucleus and the way we plan to pick up, the, the the conversation started going around like, hold on, we can we can make a run. Mm -hmm. We can make a run. We got some solid guys on our team. We getting up and down and practice. It's, it's intense. We playing pickup during the summertime. Guys is getting better. Everything like that. And personally, I'm like shit. I think my role will be a little bit more increased. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. With these guys, I know I can help. And, and you know, and that, and that's and it was it was just that simple for me. How are you still developing at this point? Because you can never stop getting better. You know what I mean? So right, how, right. How, how's your development at this point? How do you feel about yourself? Where's your confidence at in your game? It's one of those things, Drew, that like I, I always knew what I can do. Okay. I just needed that platform to where to where you know what I mean I just needed that 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 the leash taken off. Cause I felt like my freshman year the leash was on. He put the leash on and it was like, yo, I don't. I just want you to do this and this, and this. but 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 despite that, I like fuck it. Let's whatever. Like let's just let's get it done. Like you know what I'm saying. Now I I still feel the that the leash is on and I know what I can do. But it's just, I mean, I mean you feel like like damn, like yo, just let me rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Yep. Just, just just let me rock. You know what I mean? Just if you let me rock, then I can show you what I can do. If you don't. If you don't, you know what I'm saying, magnify every little thing that I'm doing, I, you know what I mean? You can actually see, you know what I mean? You can actually see we are, what I'm actually able to do. Absolutely. So that gets to answer your question. That's how I'm feeling. Okay, got you. And and how that sophomore year go for you? Sophomore year went well. Like, you, you know, the crazy thing is, I'm like, I'm only playing, at this point, I'm only playing 15, 20, 20 minutes a game, okay. right? But I'm second in the league in blocks. Got you. <laughs> I'm second in the league in blocks, you. And the crazy thing is, the only reason why I'm not first is because the dude that's first is starting. starting. Yeah, he's getting more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's getting more minutes. So, of course, you're going to get those extra blocks. But I'm, I mean, I'm affecting the game. I'm getting up and down. I'm having huge games. I'm having games, big games against Indiana while I'm doing my thing. National TV games. Yes, sir. Uh, L LSU. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm having these huge games against these big teams, big baby. Um, you know what I mean? Against these, you know what I mean? Like these these notable names. Yes, I'm, I'm I'm doing well. North Carolina, Sean May, that whole North Carolina squad. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm having these huge games, and it's and the rumblings is going around campus and around Kentucky. Yo, why Shigari ain't starting? Mm. Hold that. We got a minute. I'm gonna log out so we can log back in. Okay. Cool. Back. All right. 